Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another do-it-yourself PC how-to guide for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'll be showing you how to install the ever-popular Noctua NHD15 on the AMD AM4 platform. Now, truth be told, this is not a new cooler. The NHD15 has been around for many years in various forms, but throughout that time, it's been considered one of the very best air coolers ever released. And in fact, this very cooler was featured on the channel back in November 2019 when I named it the best cooler under $100. At that time, I was actually testing on the Intel platform and I included an installation video in that shootout. But since then, a lot of people have moved to the AM4 platform from AMD thanks to the popularity of the Zen 2 and Zen 3 processors. So I figured in a series of videos that I'm publishing this month on new high-end coolers, I would move over to the AM4 platform and also show you how to install this cooler on that platform. Now, I should mention that there are two versions of this currently for sale. This is the Chromex Black Edition. There's also the standard Brown Edition. This one costs $10 more, but the performance is identical as is the installation process. So if you install either this or the Brown version, you'll have the exact same experience. The only difference is the color. Now, you may be wondering what these two coolers are sitting next to me for. Well, these will be featured in an upcoming video where I compare the benchmarks of this cooler versus these two, the Scythe Fuma 2 and the Liquid Freezer 2 360 from Arctic. Together, these three coolers probably generate more interest on the channel than every other CPU cooler combined. So of course, I had to include these in the shootout. I also have three more big name liquid coolers in this roundup. I'm not gonna reveal them at this point, but if you've been following the channel lately, you probably know what those are, and they will be featured in the third of a three-part series of videos on high-end coolers for 2021. But first, let's get into the installation of the Noctua NHD15. One of the great things about installing any Noctua cooler is the accessory kit, incredibly well labeled. It's so easy to know what you have in your hands at any given time. And it's also aided, of course, by the best manuals in the business. No cooler manufacturer does as good a job with their manuals as Noctua. So the first thing you'll need to do is remove the fans from the heatsink. That front fan actually doesn't even come installed from the factory. I just put it on for the intro video, so I'll take it off again here. But the middle fan also needs to be removed to give you access to the mounting screws. So I'm gonna remove that fan right now using the clips. They're pretty easy to use, especially when the heatsink's not mounted inside of a case. I pull that fan right out, and then you can see the two mounting screws at the bottom of the heatsink. These are the ones I'll need to get access to with a long screwdriver, and that is included in the box if you don't have one. So this is just about ready to install. I'll note that there are a couple things you need to make sure of. Of course, there's the plastic cover that you remove from the bottom of the heatsink, and also mount the heatsink correctly. You'll see that there's Noctua words emblazoned here. Make sure they're the right side up. Now I'll be mounting the cooler on top of this Ryzen 9 3900X processor. It uses the AM4 socket, of course. Note that it is rotated 90 degrees in the socket, so the Ryzen logo is sideways. That is correct. I'm locking the bar in place, and now it's time to install the motherboard backplate. Note the four holes here, and of course, the backplate is included with the motherboard. I get this question a lot. Is this included with the cooler? No, it is not. Some people say that they're missing this and they don't have a backplate. It is included with your motherboard. It's always included with your motherboard. So if you can't find it, it's because it's in your motherboard box. All right, so there it is. It goes through the back. And this is one of the reasons I actually have the case upright like this because I can't install this without access to the back of the motherboard. So here I go. I will fit it through those four holes. Of course, this wouldn't work if I had the case on its side against the desk or on the floor. And as I hold that backplate on, I'm going to mount this onto the motherboard. And this is where I wish I had more than two hands because I have to hold that mounting bracket on while also putting a screw through this bracket and including a spacer. So note that the gray spacer is the one you use for AM4. The orientation doesn't matter, but it does have to be on the inside of this little mounting bracket. The screw goes through and I've just hand tightened it here and let it hang so that I have my other hand free to put the other spacer in while still holding that back plate on through the back of the case. So this is the most awkward step of the entire installation. I've got to kind of fumble with this screw to get it through into the back plate while still holding the back plate in place so it doesn't fall out. And there I have it. The whole system is now in place and I can screw it down. Note that it does have multiple screw holes. I've used the ones for AM4. They're the only ones that will work. The inner screw holes are for AM3. So I'm going to alternately screw tight each of these screws a little bit, a few turns at a time so that I make sure that it's setting correctly. I don't want to bolt down one 
without making sure that the other one is also set because that motherboard backplate may not come through the holes and could get jammed against the back of the motherboard, which you don't want. Now I can lay my case down on its side and I don't have to fight gravity anymore. I just put these gray spacers in place, put the mounting bracket in place, and then the two screws. And then it's as simple as tightening down these screws a little bit at a time to make sure you're always applying equal pressure to both sides of the bracket. Once I've confirmed that this lower bracket is fully tightened and in place, I am done with this part of the installation. Next up is thermal paste. Here is the NTH one that comes in the box with the Chromex Black Cooler. You'll see it's partially depressed, so it's not quite like the retail product. You get enough in this tube for probably around three applications, about this much as you can see. And it would be just fine if you don't have any other thermal paste on hand. It's really good stuff, but I'm actually gonna be using NTH2 and a much larger vial of it because I do a lot of cooler changes. So this is what I'll be using for the application. One thing I really like about Noctua thermal paste is it's got pretty high viscosity, but not too high, which means it's easy to modulate how much you dispense from the tube without losing control of it and without it being too hard to spread. And you'll see on this Ryzen processor, I actually put four little dots on the corners because it is a relatively large heat spreader versus say an Intel CPU. The next step is to drop the cooler into place, keeping in mind there is a right side up and a wrong side up. So here are those Noctua logos. Because this cooler is entirely symmetric, there is no reason to flip this upside down and have those logos in the wrong orientation. So now I just drop it into place, noting that the screw is more or less on top of the mounting bracket. And I'll use my screwdriver to just test that those are in line and just get it screwed a little bit, just to lock this cooler into place. So I can see that I got a little purchase there on the lower screw. The top screw isn't quite biting. I can see it's still moving here. So I just move this around a little bit, keeping in mind that there's still thermal paste that I am spreading underneath when I apply the pressure here. So as I go back and forth and screw in these screws, I do spread that thermal paste. And of course, I wanna do this back and forth, back and forth to get a nice even spread of the thermal paste and to make sure that I have applied appropriate pressure on both sides of the CPU's heat spreader, top and bottom. You definitely don't wanna crank down on one screw all the way while the other one is entirely loose. You'll get a bad application of your thermal paste and you might put too much pressure on one edge of the CPU's heat spreader. So I'm gonna go back and forth here and lock this down. And one really nice thing about the Noctua cooler is that it has spring-loaded screws, so you can't get too tight. It will just stop screwing in when it's at the appropriate pressure level. Now I'll go ahead and lower the middle fan into position. And this is gonna be a little bit harder in some smaller cases and also impossible if you have a video card installed. Note that I have my video card uninstalled at this point. Now you can actually sit the fan all the way down on the bottom, sitting on the bracket, but you're gonna to wanna to raise it up a little bit, not too high of course, just in the middle of the heat sink so that the air blows through it rather than under it and over it. And in this situation, I'm gonna have it nearly at the same level as the top of the heat sink. And then I will clip these fan clips over. Note that there are two notches and you actually want it on the further notch to fully secure the fan. And one quick tip for setting the height of that fan is just counting the number of fins above the fan. That's how I know whether or not it's on the same level on both sides. Now, in case you didn't know, one of the challenges with this dual fan heatsink is that front fan is gonna sit above your RAM. And I'm using moderately tall RGB RAM here, so it does mean that this fan is raised up. I'm gonna sit it right on top of the RAM, and you can see it's a lot higher than the middle fan. I'll clip it into position. There is no trouble with using these clips because they can go up and down infinitely, unlike a lot of other coolers. And now I'm going to actually attach the fans to the motherboard using the included splitter. That's really convenient in case your motherboard doesn't have enough headers for the dual fans. You'll see that one of the inputs here has three pins and the other has four pins. No, it's not broken. The one with three pins simply doesn't read RPM because you can't read two fans RPMs via one header on the motherboard. So whichever fan you want to monitor via your motherboard, you'll just plug that into that four pin input on the splitter. I'm going to do that with the front fan so I know how fast the front fan is running. I won't be able to monitor the middle fan. It will simply get the same PWM signal as the front fan and may be running at slightly higher or lower RPMs. 
The last step is to connect the splitter to the appropriate CPU fan header. I actually have three at the top of my motherboard and I will use the one labeled CPU fan. I also have a CPU opt header on my motherboard and I would use that if I wanted to independently monitor the RPMs of the two fans on the CPU cooler. But here I'm just connecting this single PWM splitter. And note that I had a lot of space to work with between the top of the cooler and then the top panel of my chassis. If you're using a smaller chassis, you're gonna have more trouble getting your hand in there. You may actually want to connect the PWM cable before the heatsink is even in place. Now the fun part, seeing the cooler in action, it looks great. It's a huge cooler, of course, covers up my RAM, but you can still see the RGB a little bit through the edge of the fan, which is kind of cool. Make sure you do account for that higher fan position when you measure your case's clearance. And also note that the cooler comes in close contact with the video card, so you really don't have any access to that first slot. Now, if you're someone who removes components a lot like I do, this is gonna be a problem because you don't have access to the latch for that video card. And likewise, it's impossible to remove the fans with the video card in place. So it's a bit of a catch 22. And that's why I don't actually use this cooler in my test rigs. But for anyone who wants to set it and forget it, it's a fantastic solution. If you have any questions, post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give me a like and subscribe. And until next time, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru.